Hello and welcome to GameSec. I figured now would be a good time to check out all the games on the original PlayStation that support widescreen, otherwise known as 16x9. But first, let's check out how widescreen worked back in the prehistoric times of the 1990s. Before the advent of high definition consoles like the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, you had a maximum resolution of about 720 pixels wide by 480 tall to work with on an NTSC console. Widescreen TVs of the time didn't have more horizontal resolution. Instead, they stretched the 4x3 image horizontally to fill the screen. So basically people who designed games as well as widescreen DVDs would have to compress the wider image anamorphically into the 4x3 area, making it look skinny. The widescreen TV would then stretch it out so it looks normal. A wide image can also be letterboxed and then zoomed in, but this will decrease the image quality even more as now you're stretching it on both axes. So between anamorphic and letterboxing, anamorphic widescreen is always preferable. It has more image detail. Unfortunately, most game developers in this generation, as well as the one that would follow, wouldn't redesign the bitmap graphics for this. So things like the HUD, loading screens, menus, and whatnot would all appear stretched. Usually only the polygons would have the correct proportions when the image was set for widescreen. All right, now you're a widescreen genius and you could even teach classes on it. You're welcome. Anyway, for each game I cover, I'll let you know how they achieve the wider screen, whether it's by uh, cropping and or letterboxing, or if it actually has a wider field of view. So let's get started. First up is Aqua GT from Take-Two Interactive. This one was only released in Europe. You can play this boat racing game in normal 4x3 mode like a complete loser, or you can play it in 16x9 widescreen like a true champion. And it's truly wider as well, no cropping going on. Here's the normal 4x3 mode. And here's the widescreen mode, which you can see offers an increased field of view. All right. This is a pretty bog standard racing game. It's not as flashy as something like Hydro Thunder. Still though, it's not bad at all. And I'm honestly surprised that it stayed in Europe. Here's Bloody Roar 2 from Hudson Soft. This is a cool fighting game. In the options, you'll notice settings for normal, which is the 4x3 mode, wide 1, wide 2, and wide 3. Which one should you pick? Well, wide 1 is a bit closer to the fighters than normal mode, so there's not as much empty space on the sides. Wide 2 has the same camera as normal, only wider. And wide 3 is really zoomed in compared to the other modes. Here's all four modes on the screen simultaneously for you to check out the difference. You better pause the video because I'm not keeping this up after I finish this sentence. Right here, I'm playing in Y2 because eh, why not? No matter which one you choose, you'll enjoy this if you like 3D fighting games. And why not play it in widescreen? This is Codename Tanka from Psygnosis. This one's a first person shooter with some good music. Sadly, it doesn't allow for analog controls. If you wanna look up or down, you do this with the L1 and L2 buttons. This one has a widescreen mode in the option screen, which letterboxes the image. You can then zoom this in to fit your 16 by nine widescreen TV, more or less. It's still a bit letterboxed, even when zoomed in. Unfortunately, our field of view doesn't increase. Instead, some of the bottom and a lot of the top are cropped out. The game isn't bad for an early first person shooter, especially after you get used to the rather unique controls. But I think I prefer to play this one in normal mode rather than in widescreen. Here's Colin McRae Rally from Codemasters. This is not one of my favorite rally racing games due to the floaty physics, but you can enable widescreen at any time by pausing the game. I like how convenient this is as opposed to needing to back out of the game, go into some option screen, set it, and then restart the game. Weirdly, the sequel to this game, which is also here on the original PlayStation, doesn't have a widescreen mode. Two 
This is F1-2000 from Electronic Arts. This one looks good, but it plays and feels like the world is moving in slow motion. It's dreadful. Unfortunately, the widescreen mode is cropped as you can clearly see here. You can make it a little bit more acceptable if you move the camera back a little. Strangely, the bitmapped graphics are too skinny in the normal mode, but look perfectly fine in widescreen. That's definitely backwards from how it usually is. F1 Championship Season 2000 is the second F1 game from Electronic Arts in a single year. It's basically the same game with new menu graphics, new audio, and faster gameplay. Unfortunately, the widescreen mode is still cropped in this one, but I'd rather play this one any day over the earlier F1 2000 game as they have seemed to work out some of the speed issues with the gameplay. Here's Formula One from Psygnosis. Yes, it's another F1 game. I find this one a little bit more fun than the Electronic Arts F1 games. If you pause, you get an option that's called widescreen, but actually it just squishes everything down and letterboxes it. It's literally just squished, it's not any wider or even cropped at all. Everything is distorted and tough to see. The developers apparently didn't know what the word wide means. Who would want to play like this? Generally, this one's pretty fun though, like I said, but stick with the normal mode. The sequel, Formula 198, came out two years later. The game itself is much worse. In fact, I can't stand playing it. It does have an actual anamorphic widescreen mode this time, though. Unfortunately, they achieved this by cropping, but yeah, I can't say I'm surprised. I recommend sticking with the first one instead. There are some websites that say that Puzzle Bobble 3, aka Bust a Move 99, has a widescreen mode. It does not. The confusion likely comes from the selection of the field size in the edit mode, where you can choose a wide field. Someone thought that this meant widescreen, and it doesn't. There are plenty of other games like Madden 2002, ISS Pro Evolution 2, Trap Gunner, and others which are purported to have a widescreen mode, but definitely do not. The word wide does not always mean widescreen. Anyway, back to the games. This is the excellent Ghost in the Shell from Exact. This amazing game from the makers of Jumping Flash offers a pretty decent widescreen mode. You have different objectives for each mission, and this one has a lot to offer on the whole. It also requires a good amount of skill, and it's always fun to play. The widescreen mode allows for a greater field of view in most circumstances, and who wouldn't want that? No matter how you play it, though, you're going to have fun. But there's really no reason not to play this in widescreen, unless, of course, you're playing on a good old 4x3 CRT. This is J-League Winning 11 2000 from Konami. It's a soccer game that was only released in Japan. Konami loved making soccer games. The widescreen mode crops in a little and stretches the field graphics, but the players themselves aren't stretched. It's neither a tremendously good nor an offensive implementation of widescreen. All of the J-League Winning 11 games starting with number three, then 98 all the way up to 2001 have this feature. I don't think that you'll benefit much, if any, from using it. You can kind of just take it or leave it. This is Jay's Racing from Tyo, only released in Japan. This one's a pretty silly racing game. It has two widescreen options, wide and full. The first one called Wide just moves the camera a bit further away from the car with no anamorphic squeeze. Unless you keep your TV at 4x3, I don't really recommend this mode. Full has the anamorphic squeeze, but it's not squeezed very much, causing it to still look a little bit stretched in actual widescreen. That's not good. 
Correcting for their anamorphic miscalculation in editing, we can see that this mode is indeed a little bit wider. Basically, it's 14 by 9 as opposed to 16 by 9. But the problem is that most TVs can't do it like this. They're either in 4 by 3 mode or 16 by 9. I suppose you could create a specific profile for this game on a scaler like the RetroTink 4K. In fact, such a profile could be used for a surprising amount of games listed here today, which you'll see. I don't think that the developers were able to test on a real widescreen TV back then, so they just guessed. Hey, I mean, this was when widescreen was brand new after all. I imagine that information on how to properly support it was probably pretty spotty. And then there's JGTC, All Japan Grand Tour Car Championship, also from TO. Same story with this one. It has normal, wide, and full modes with the exact same differences between them. As a game, this is nowhere near as fun as Jay's Racing was, and that one was only decent. The graphics seem rather shaky or twitchy. I'm not sure if that's intentional. The control is also a bit more problematic in this one as well. Here's Jarrett and Labonte stock car racing from Codemasters. Elsewhere, this is known as Toka World Touring Cars. This is a pretty damn good looking game on the console, all things considered. And it looks even better in widescreen. They got the anamorphic squeeze perfect in this one, and boy does it look good. Basically, you get offers to test drive cars, and then you can race them if you're quick enough. It plays quite nicely as well, though I wish there were some music during a race. I think most people in the US missed out on this one because it was endorsed by a couple of forgettable dudes from NASCAR. Might have been better to keep the Toka branding. This is Moto Racer World Tour from Delphine Software, makers of Flashback. This one's completely different from Flashback, though. Instead, it's a motorcycle racing game, and it looks pretty good for its time. Unfortunately, cropping is the order of things when it comes to the widescreen mode here. It's not too horrible, though, and it remains completely playable. As a game, it's alright, but if you're gonna play it, a DualShock controller makes a huge difference. I like how this one has some motocross stages as well. There's lots of variety here, which definitely makes it worth a look. This is Ms. Pac-Man Maze Madness from Namco. This is basically a 2D Ms. Pac-Man adventure with lots of other contraptions thrown in to make it more interesting. Unfortunately, this one doesn't do widescreen very well. The anamorphic squeeze is way off. In fact, it's barely applied, just like Jay's Racing. That means the image is stretched too much horizontally in widescreen mode. If we adjust for this, we can see that there's definitely more added to the sides on the screen, but not much. Once again, this is very close to being 14 by 9 instead of 16 by 9. It's certainly better than nothing if you have the means to display it that way. Overall, this is a decent title if you like Pac-Man style gameplay, but when it comes to its widescreen presentation, this is no masterpiece. Here's the Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed from Electronic Arts. Here's a game where you can only race Porsches. The anamorphic squeeze rate isn't quite right in the widescreen mode, resulting in a tiny bit of horizontal stretch, but it's not anything to get too worked up about. There's also a bit of crop on the top and bottom of the screen in widescreen mode. If we correct for the anamorphic squeeze of the game, the aspect ratio is basically 15 by 9. Otherwise, this is an average racing game limited to a single manufacturer. This is the Need for Speed V-Rally 2 from EA and Infogrames. This is a pretty fun rally racing game. And that fun has increased 16.9% if you play it in the widescreen mode. This one gets the anamorphic squeeze absolutely correct. Not that it was horrible in the last game or anything. 
The cars here sometimes feel like they're made out of plastic because they're so light and they might roll over if the wind blows a bit, but otherwise this is a really good one. The Dreamcast version of this game gave me motion sickness back in the day if I'm remembering right, but none of that here for me in this one. This is Pac-Man World from Namco. This is a fun little 3D platformer with Pac-Man who can now jump as well as perform lots of different moves so people in the 90s could appreciate him more. Like Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness, this one doesn't do especially well for its widescreen mode and it will look too stretched if you let your TV adjust for it. Adjusting for it in editing, we can see that it's another 14 by 9 game, just like Miss Pac-Man was. I feel that this is a better game than Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness since you have much more control over Pac-Man. Since I can adjust for it, I do enjoy playing in the widescreen mode for sure, even though it's just a little bit wider. But you're definitely not missing much if you stick with 4x3. This episode is turning out to be a little bit shorter than I had anticipated. Oh well, that's okay. When I revisit this subject sometime in the future, I'm going to cram the Saturn and the Nintendo 64 into a single video. And maybe even the Dreamcast as well, what the hell. This one's called Racing Groovy VS Versus, and it's from Sammy. This is basically a dollar store ridge racer. This one has two different widescreen modes, both of them being anamorphic. The wide mode is the one that you want, and you do get a wider field of view, but the camera also pulls back a little and, for whatever reason, is slightly closer to the ground. The full mode is like some of the other games with basically a 14 by 9 aspect ratio once you correct for it. This is Rush Hour by Clockwork Games. This is a racing game with a pseudo overhead perspective, I guess. This one offers a high res mode, but this mode offers the exact same screen space interlaced and shrunk down to 50% of its original size. It's totally useless, who would want this? Then there's the wide mode. Honestly, this is even more useless. This is, again, the same exact field of view as the normal mode, but interlaced and squished down to give it a letterboxed look. It's not any wider or cropped in any way. Instead, it's just distorted for no reason whatsoever. It's not a bad little game otherwise, and it has some good music, but this game doesn't truly support any kind of widescreen. Checkpoint. Here's Snow Racer 98 from Infogrames. This is a skiing and snowboarding game, as you may have guessed. It was only released in Europe, and it can be fun here and there. To access the widescreen mode, you need to first put in the code WIDE in the password screen. This mode is extremely cropped, which is likely why it's hidden. Look at this, it's nearly unplayable in spots and certainly not enjoyable. You definitely want to play it in the normal 4x3 mode instead. Checkpoint! Gate missed. This is Football and This is Football 2 from Team Soho also make this list. This here is part two, just in case you were wondering. The widescreen mode during gameplay is a bit wider without any cropping, though some of the close-ups seem to be a bit cropped. Really though, these titles look great in widescreen. This is Football. That's Football. Let's see, yep, this is Football 2. Oh, that's not Football. Oh, but this right here, this is Football. Check it out. He puts the ball away with minimum cost. Here's TNN Motorsports Hardcore TR. What a great name. This average truck racing game offers three different visual modes. It has the normal mode, which you're looking at here. This mode has a slight black bar on the top of the screen for whatever reason. Then there's wide, which interlaces and letterboxes the image. You can zoom in on this one, but it's still severely letterboxed. Your field of view is indeed wider, but it's also very cropped on the top and bottom. Then there's the widescreen TV mode, which is anamorphic widescreen. Unfortunately, it's cropped as well, giving it a really zoomed in look. 
You also get that black bar that's on top of the screen again. There are even some slight black bars on the sides. Personally, I'd play this one in normal mode if I had to play it at all. In Europe, this one is known as C3 Racing, and specifically in the UK, it's also known as Max Power Racing. This one uses cars instead of trucks, and because of this, the control is much better. It feels way more responsive. It has the same widescreen modes as TNN Motorsports Hardcore TR, but notice the absence of the black bar at the top of the screen. That's kind of backwards that the PAL version of the game is the one without the black bars compared to the NTSC version. You still get some slight black bars on the sides, but that's okay. Overall, the NTSC version of this game is just not as good as the European release. This is Toka Championship Racing from Codemasters, also known as Toka Touring Car Championship. Wow, there sure are a lot of racing games here today. The widescreen mode here is another one that doesn't have enough of an anamorphic squeeze, resulting in basically a 14 by 9 aspect ratio. Therefore, it looks pretty stretched if you're relying on your TV to fix the anamorphic squeeze for you. Honestly, it's kind of interesting to see how much of this is on the PlayStation. I wonder if Sony sent out some documents about supporting widescreen that has some faulty information. Does anyone out there have any information about that? I'd really like to know. Otherwise, this game is decent, if unremarkable. Here's Toeg Max, Isoku Driver Master from Cave and Atlas. Toeg games are basically about mountain racing in Japan. They love this. And they got the anamorphic squeeze perfect on this one, and there's no cropping at all. These same developers also did high velocity on the Saturn, which I'll cover when I get around to the Saturn and Nintendo 64 widescreen episode. This game isn't bad, though it is a bit twitchy on the controls. It has some good music, but you won't be able to hear much of it over the engine sound that they give you at its default volume. This is Triple Play Baseball from Electronic Arts. Hey, what can I say? It's a baseball game. You can choose widescreen at any time via the pause menu, which is nice. The anamorphic squeeze isn't quite perfect, so it's the tiniest bit stretched, but it's probably not even worth complaining about. It's very doubtful that most people would even notice. Triple Play Baseball 2000 as well as 2001 also have this same widescreen mode. He got it all! It's way Run. Wipeout 3 from Psygnosis also makes the cut. This futuristic racing game is lots of fun and pushes the console to its limits in many ways. The graphics are very sharp for the system. The widescreen mode is both a little wider on the sides as well as cropped a bit on the top. It's worth it though as the crop factor doesn't remove much that matters. So even though it is somewhat cropped, I'd rather play this one in widescreen than not. And to me, a game like Wipeout feels best in the 16x9 aspect ratio because you're racing death sleds in the future and all. There's no 4x3 in the future. It's Worms Armageddon from Microprose. This is a turn-based strategy game which I still haven't fully learned how to play. This one has a 16x9 mode in the option screen, but I had a hard time getting it to stick. It always flopped back to 4x3, which was super weird. Eventually, it did stick though, and the wider screen is super nice. It absolutely lets you see more of the playfield. I can definitely see how people like this game, and it did start to grow on me even with my short time I spent with it today. And widescreen is for sure the way to go on this one if you're playing on such a monitor. Just make sure that option sticks. Stupid. Finally, we have Yarudora Double Cast. This was only released in Japan. It's a visual novel and it has three screen modes. Normal here simply puts the text below the image. Wide 1 puts an ever-present shadow box at the bottom of the screen for the text and it's meant to be zoomed in, basically as a letterboxed image. Wide 2 says it's for 16 by 9, but actually it just puts an ever-present green box on the screen for the text which will get cut off a bit if you zoom in. None of these modes are anamorphic. If you want to play this one in widescreen, play in the wide mode just as long as you don't mind the shadow box always being on top of the image. 
This is Volume 1. Volumes 2, 3, and 4 are also on the PlayStation, and they have these same options. And, of course, they stayed in Japan as well. And there you go, every widescreen game that I could find anyway for the original PlayStation. It's honestly amazing that so many games even attempted this back then. So what do you think about widescreen games in the 32-bit generation? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSag. Welcome back to my show where I talk about my favorite games. I, I really like this one. Here it is. Pac-Man 2, The New hey, Adventures. I like this one. Mom! Not now! I'm talking about video games for my show! This is a good sequel to Pac-Man because he doesn't just eat dots, he goes on an adventure. Totally Adventures. And Mom, no! Come on! I'll be up in a minute, alright? Pac-Man is... he he's character is really fun with this one because he it's it's a lot different and mom no jeez but i really enjoyed this one you should try it let's check out the cartridge oh look it's five dollars i like five dollars uh, like and subscribe thanks